find the inverse of sinh x. So this is the hyperbolic sine function. In this video, we're going to try to find the inverse, um, you know, without you know memorizing it. We're going to come up with it or derive the inverse. So first, recall that the hyperbolic sine is half the difference of e to the x and e to the negative x, right? Half the difference of these two. Okay, so whenever you're finding the inverse, if you think back to like your uh, math classes, <laughs> the first step is you call it y. So y is equal to sinh x, right? That's step one. And then in step two, you switch your x and y. So x equals sinh y. And then in step three, you actually have to solve for y. And that's where the bulk of the work uh, comes into play in this problem. So let's go ahead and write down what we have again. So x is equal to sinh y. Now sinh y, using the definition, is e to the y minus e to the negative y, and this is all being divided by 2. So we somehow have to solve this equation for y. A good first start maybe is to multiply by 2. When we do that, we end up with 2x equals e to the y minus e to the negative y. Now there's lots of ways to proceed here, but the idea here is we are going to have a quadratic equation in e to the y. So the trick is to multiply everything by e to the y. So on the left-hand side, we get 2x e to the y. And on the right-hand side, we have e to the y minus e to the negative y times e to the y. Good stuff. All right, now let's go ahead and write this down again. So 2x e to the y. Here we'll distribute e to the y times e to the y. Well, that's just e to the y plus y, right? You add the exponents when the bases are the same. So that's e to the 2y. And then here, e to the y times e to the negative y, that's just 1. y plus negative y is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So you just get 1. So again, it's e to the y, e to the negative y, which is e to the y plus negative y, so e to the 0, which is 1. So everything looks OK. Let's rewrite this as follows. So we have e to the 2y. We'll subtract this, so put it on this side. So minus 2x e to the y, and then we still have the minus 1, and this is equal to 0. Let's think about it this way. This is e to the y squared, right? 2 times y is 2y minus 2x e to the y minus 1 equals 0. And now we'll use the quadratic formula, right, to solve this equation. So instead of x being the variable, e to the y is the variable, right? So e to the y is the variable. This is the variable. This is the variable. So a here will be 1, right? That's 1. b will be negative 2x, right? That's the constant. We're treating it as a constant. So that's the coefficient of e to the y. And then c here is negative 1. Right? So these are the coefficients of this quadratic equation. So e to the y is equal to, let me write the formula down. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all being divided by 2a. This is a really cool problem. Um, and so this is equal to, let's see, negative b. So negative, negative 2x, so 2x. So 2x plus or minus when you square the b, you're going to square the 2, so you're going to get 4. And you're going to square the x, so you'll get x squared. And then 4ac, so I'll, I won't skip any steps here. 4a, and then c was negative 1. And this is all being divided by 2a. So 2 times 1 is 2, right? a is 1. Let's keep going. Let me write everything over here. So going over here, we have e to the y equals 2x plus or minus the square root of 4x squared plus 4 divided by 2. So this is 2x plus or minus. You can factor out a 4, so you get square root of 4, square root of x squared plus 1 over 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so e to the y is equal to 2x plus or minus 2 square root of x squared plus 1, all being divided by 2. 
You can divide everything by 2, or even better yet, let me show the work. You can factor out a 2. So this is x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. And then boom, those are gone. So finally, we end up with e to the y equals x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. So we have to take cases. It obviously can't be both of these, so we have to figure out which one it can't be. So let's see. Let's look at the case where it's minus. So could this be a possibility? Right? Is this, is this a possibility? Well, let's think about it. If e to the y has to be positive, so the only way that this is not a possibility is if this is negative. Now, is it negative? Let's see. x, well, we know x is less than the square root of x squared plus 1. Right? That's certainly true. And that means that x minus the square root of x squared plus 1 is less than 0. So this cannot happen, right? because this would be saying that e to the y is a negative number. And an e is never negative. If you think of just simply e to the x, it has a horizontal asymptote at 0, and it looks like this. This is e to the x. So it's always positive, no matter what. So that's no good. So that means that e to the y is equal to x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Taking the natural log of both sides or just rewriting it in logarithmic form, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the natural log so you see it. So this is x plus that. And then use an identity. ln of e to the y is y. So here we get y is the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And the fourth step is to just write down the inverse again. So step 4 is f inverse of x, right? This is the inverse of the hyperbolic sign. It's the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And there it is. I hope this video helps. Maybe there's other ways to do this problem. Uh, this is just the way I did it. I've, I've never actually seen it done. So I'm sure this is uh, the common approach. I hope this helps.